episode three, English scones. So I'm sure you're finally excited that we get to actually bake. No more introductions, no more measurements. Now let's really get into it. First thing I'm going to do is give a shout out to my editor and chief, Sydney. Thank you, Sydney, for everything you've done. Also, this apron, shout out to Mrs. Scribner, my eighth grade home ec teacher. I still have this apron. So I hope she listens to me and follows my website and my page. Um, that's all for now. Let's get baking. So the ingredients we have on the table today we're going to be using is granulated sugar, white flour, baking spray, lemon juice, salt, vanilla, baking powder, cold butter. And on the top will be sugar that's highly coarse and one egg yolk beaten. On the items on the table below, we're going to be using, which you might wonder why, a cheese grater. That's going to be one of our tips. Also, rolling pin, different measuring utensils as we learned, dry and wet. And this, does anybody know what this is? We're going to find out later. All right, let's get baking. Hi, okay, first thing we're going to do is wash our hands. Not because of COVID, but because we want healthy, clean food and safe, clean cooking. Then we're going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees. Some of you have a convection oven. I use convection, convection setting at 400 for my oven. Each oven is a little different. Okay, hi, here we are. I got my mixing bowl and I'm ready. And the recipe, first thing, calls for two and a half cups flour. Remember, we need to aerate the flour to make it lots of air in there. And I'm going to be using my two cup wet and dry measuring utensil today that um, I used in the previous and showed you in the previous episode. Now, if you want to do it with a spoon, you can. Fill that up. And we're going to take our knife, of course, and we are going to make sure that it is absolutely level. Tap, tap, tap. And into the bowl. That was the two. Now we're going to add the other half. A dry measuring cup. Next on the recipe is baking powder. It calls for three and a half teaspoons. Now make sure, one very important thing, that your baking powder has an expiration date. So please make sure and check the date before you use it because if your baking powder is expired, it won't raise properly. Inside the baking powder container, you see this edge right here. You can use that to level off your teaspoon for your dry measuring in case, instead of using a knife. So three and a half. Go in there. We got one, two, three, and a half. All right, so next after the baking powder, we're going to be adding the sugar. Three tablespoons sugar. So we're going to be adding three tablespoons. Next comes the salt. Now, recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon salt. Some of you use unsalted butter. I use salted butter as a substitute in this recipe, and that way I don't need to use the salt, because that's double salt. But if you want to follow the recipe exactly, then you would use unsalted butter. So I'm going to leave that part out of, this, of the recipe today. Now we're on to the butter. Okay, now it calls for three quarters of a cup of butter. So, of course, if you look at the measurement on the side, one whole cube of butter is a half a cup. So we're going to be taking one of those and then another quarter. So we will cut that down. Now, you might be wondering why I have this utensil here. This utensil, utensil is a common cheese grater, but... A trick is, tips and tricks, 
I'm going to use it to grate the cold butter into the dry ingredients. Back in old times, they used to use two forks. Mix it, mix it, mix it, get the butter. But I've learned that the smaller the container and the smaller the pieces of butter, the easier it is to mix. So let's grate. Two sides of the grater. Be sure and use the right side. As you can see, it's coming off in small little pieces. So we're gonna grate this whole cube of butter. And this is what it looks like when we're done. You can see all the butter grated in there in small thin pieces. All right, so then after this, we're going to stir. Okay, everybody, this is the fun part. Now the mixing part, the part that you get your hands in there. All you homeschoolers and kids, time to get your hands dirty. Now make sure your hands are washed after using all those products. Now, one way we can start to use mixing is by a fork. So let's start mixing to get the butter incorporated with all the dry ingredients. If you take your fork and push it up to the side, you can see that the butter is easily mixed in to the flour and dry ingredients. What we're looking for in this mixture is small, fine, crumb-like balls. So as you can get it incorporated with your fork, now we get our hands going in there. You can feel the mixture coming together. It's nice and smooth. And you can see the balls are forming. Here's what it looks like. That's what your mixture should look like. All right, very good. Okay, now we're on to the wet ingredients and hide, heating them up on the stove. You're going to need a small pot. You're going to be adding the milk and the lemon juice to the small pot, as you can see that the recipe says. So, we're going to be using for milk three quarters of a cup. Here is my one and a half cup measuring cup, so we're going to go to three quarters. Okay. Now, why are we doing that? What is the reason that we're doing lemon juice and milk? Well, the, can, the mixture of lemon juice and milk is also a rising agent. And so that helps the scone rise and become fluffy. And we're going to heat that up until just warm on the oven. Be sure and do it about low to medium. Lemon juice. Look at the cap. What are we going to do? We need one teaspoon. Also, now that it's warm, we're going to add the last wet ingredient, one teaspoon vanilla. And we're going to mix that up and set that aside. Here's the consistency of what it looks like. Okay, here we have the parchment paper. We're going to line that on our baking sheet. As you can see when I take it out, there is a waxy side and a dry paper side. So we're going to, of course, use the wax part up, which is the non-stick part. It's okay if it doesn't exactly fit into the sheet. Just make sure all the corners are covered. Wax part up, nope, see, it's easy to do. Wax part up. Now, recipe calls for taking this and putting this into the oven to warm it. The reason we do that is when we put the scones on the hot baking sheet, it causes air to force, heat hot air to force and to cause the, all the rising agents, the baking soda, lemon juice and milk, to start working quickly and they rise quickly. So this goes in the oven. Our board ready to knead. Let's move our things to the side. I'm going to use a plain board 
and a rolling pin. Who of us has rolling pins? There's different forms of rolling pins. There's heavy ones, really heavy ones that are made out of marble. There's plastic ones. Some people even use a bottle, an empty wine bottle. But today I'm gonna to use the old fashioned wooden rolling pin. And we're gonna use that to roll out our mixture. Here we have our cutting board. We're gonna be using it on that. And now we're going to be adding our wet ingredients into the dry. We're going to be mixing it first with a spoon to get it incorporated. Part of scones, the problem with them is, is they become overmixed and they become hard. And these scones are supposed to be light and fluffy. So see the consistency? It's starting to be formed into a ball. Try to get as much as the dry ingredients that you can in there. Now that might look a little wet to you, but that's okay because tip and trick, we're going to be adding some extra flour to the board. Even though it's a hot day out today, we're still gonna need to get that extra flour so it doesn't stick and incorporate it in so it's not sticky. Let's take some flour and put it on our board. Move it around. Be sure and flour your rolling pin so that does not stick also. Okay, we're gonna turn this out on the board now. Looks pretty good so far. The question is, how does your look so far? Okay, kids and adults, hands on. Let's incorporate this flour in there. It feels so good. Nice and fluffy and airy. We're not gonna over mix, as was mentioned. See how it's coming together? You might need a little more flour on your board if it starts to stick. According to the recipe, it says fold the dough over th two to three times. I do a little bit more than that because I like to make sure that it's really incorporated in there. Now we're gonna take and flatten. If it looks like there's a little bit of flour on top, that's okay. Let's take our rolling pin, roll it out. I like to make it in a shape of a square. Now, some people like their scones cut in circles. You can use a regular glass that you would take flour in, moisten around the edges, and cut a circle like that. That would be a perfect scone. I like to cut my scones in triangles like the picture on Facebook and the one that I've posted before. You can do it either way, whichever you prefer. This way that I do it yields about eight scones. All right, we're almost there. All right, now it's time to put it on to the baking sheet. Hi. Okay, here we have our dough ready and our baking sheet hot out of the oven. I'm gonna be taking and using my pastry scraper and I'm gonna be cutting it into half length ways. That length ways and triangles. Triangle, triangle, and triangle. All right, great, how we doing? Here's what the finished product to go on there should look like. Take our pastry scraper. Should be about that thick and shaped in the triangle. Let's take our pan spray now and spray our parchment paper. Even though it's non stick, this is just a little extra help to keep it from non sticking. We're going to place these on the baking sheet. Here we are at six and a half minutes. They're looking pretty good, raising. And we have about six and a half to seven minutes left. 
let's test them. Push your hand on the top. Do they look good? They seem to bounce back okay. Now some of you like them a little darker than that. I prefer mine a little lighter. Because once you take these scones out of the oven, just like cookies, they continue to bake for a while on the baking sheet because they hold the heat in. So let them sit here on the baking sheet and let them rest for two minutes. As you can see, they're done. Now let's take them off. See how, oh, they slid off perfectly. And here we have our scones, warm and ready to go. Look like they're nice and moist. Let's cut one open and see. We're done inside. Nice flakiness. Very nice. All right, now let's plate it up. So here we are, we did it. As you can see before you, we have two delicious scones. Now let's cut one open. Add a little bit of butter. And some fresh strawberry jam. And here you have it. Leslie's English scones. English breakfast tea to go with my scones. And that's it. Thanks for watching episode three, English scones. Hope you enjoy them while they're hot and have a little butter on them, maybe some powdered sugar or some strawberry jam. The recipe will be on Facebook for you and any substitutes as mentioned early will be due. Uh, you will have to do on your own. Remember, I'm not making any money doing this. This is just for fun. So like and subscribe. And remember to watch episode four, which will be bread, basic white bread. Until then, from my kitchen, I make it, you bake it.